Okay, now that we've got our score laid out, let's go ahead and start inputting notes into our score. There are a variety of ways that you can add notes into Sibelius. We'll start by using the keypad over here to actually add notes into our score. If you want to add a rest first, like we have here, an eighth note rest, we can click rest and select the note value, eighth note. And what you'll notice is that my cursor or pointer is again loaded with this eighth note rest that I can place anywhere in my document. So I want to place that right here at the front because it wants to be the first eighth note rest of this particular bar. So I click on that space and enter my rest. Now I'm ready to input my second note, which in this case is an A, A, C, and A, all eighth note values. So we've got eighth note selected here, and the rest is deselected. So now we can go ahead and add eighth note. So now I have my three eighth notes. Now I can add my quarter note, go down here and change the note value to quarter note, and it is a flatted note, which is not in the key signature. So we'll click flat, and then add our B flat. And then natural for our B natural. Okay, let's continue now in adding the second bar of data. So we've got four eighth notes here. Let me show you one of the shortcuts you can use. You could enter that first eighth note, and then you can click on the R on your QWERTY keys for repeat. It's the shortcut for repeat. So I can hit the R three times and add three duplicate C notes. Change back to quarter note values for my quarter note, and then back to eighth notes. And let me just do this, eighth note, and hit R for repeat. Now you may go, Todd, that's not a C, that's a B. And I know that. This is the next thing I wanted to show you, is that using your left and right arrows and your up and down arrows between your 10 keypad and your QWERTY keys uh, give you some unique functionality. The left and right keys will move you from note to note like that. And the up and down arrows will change the actual pitch of the note that you're on. Okay, so that's just by using the up and down arrows on the keyboard. So it's real easy to create a bar that's rhythmically correct but may, may not be accurate note-wise, and then adjust each of those individual notes. Say I had a passage like this. And uh, it duplicated here, but the notes were slightly different. I could just hit R for repeat, or I could click on the bar and go Command-C and paste it, Command-V, and then go in and change the individual notes that I needed to change. So that's an easy way to duplicate a bar rhythmically and then go in and change the notes by using the left and right arrows and the up and down arrows, again, between your 10 keypad and your main QWERTY keys. You'll notice that the keypad here also resembles your 10 keypad. And there's a reason for that. It's because it has a lot of the same functionality as your 10 keypad. So, for example, if I hit the 0 on my 10 keypad, you'll notice that it enables the rest. If I hit the period right next to the zero on the pad, it turns on and off that period. If I hit the keys one through six on my 10 key pad, uh, they will engage each of these different note values. So one is, a 16th, uh, one is the 32nd note, 16th, eighth, quarter, half, and whole, based on the 10 key pad. So now we could also enter notes manually here with my cursor, but also change the value uh, to be something that's more along the lines of what I need to do. So let me see here. What's next in the bar? A whole note. 
So I can hit 6 on the 10 keypad, and I'm ready to insert my next bar. And then 8th uh, note rests, so 3 on the 10 keypad and the 0. A B flat, so I can hit the 9 on the 10 keypad, and it's 8th notes. So I can click and say 8th notes, and then I hit R. And then, actually I'll just add the rest of the bar. Then now I can use that little trick and show you earlier, using the left arrow to move uh, to the note that I want to change the pitch, and then the up arrow to actually change the pitch. Okay, good. Now I'm ready to move on to my next bar. And I'm going to say, that's also another C. So now I'm ready to enter my next note, and it's going to be a dotted quarter. So I can do that, and I don't want it to be a rest. I want it to be a note. And then tied to another quarter note. So here, I can actually tie that with this button right here, which is also the Enter key. So I can hit Enter, and then select the note value I want next, and place that note. And it's tied those two together. One of the things that's important to remember is that whenever you're in note input mode, and you've got your mouse or pointer loaded with a note, you can't do anything else but enter notes. So if I try to drag, if I try to click and drag my score around, it's not going to work and it's going to screw things up. So your best friend to get out of note input mode is the escape key. Use the escape key to get out of note input mode. So there I hit escape key. And now I can freely maneuver around, and my cursor is no longer loaded with, uh, in this case, a note. Now we've reached the point in our score where we've run into these triplets. So how do you create a triplet? Well, you create the note value that you want. So this is an eighth note triplet. So we're going to add an eighth note like that. And then we can hit escape and select that note and we can go up and just do a search for triplet. So we want triplet, note input, note input, triplet. So note input, note input, triplets. So we can click that and you can see it turned this into a triplet. We can also go and click on this side button and this will give us some options, say we want a, a, a sextuplet there, or we want a, you know, quad, whatever. So it gives us the numerous options. We just want a triplet. So now we've got our triplet, and let me ask you this. We didn't want an eighth note triplet with two eighth note rests. We wanted three eighth note triplets. So how could we duplicate this so we had three eighth note triplets? The answer is just hit R twice. We're going to repeat that note. Now we've got our triplets. We could also go down here and, and actually, you know, choose the note value that we wanted and go here and click and do it that way. But that's a little more cumbersome. One of the other things that you'll run into as you're uh, transcribing this piece or creating the project yourself in Sibelius is these kinds of bars, where you have a whole note, but you also have an additional moving line. So the way that we access additional parts or voices in Sibelius is right down here. If we click on this button, it will change to a different colored voice. So let me deselect this, because I don't want to change that to voice 2. I want that to be voice 1 or blue. And then we're going to go to voice 2 here. And now, we can start adding these other notes on a separate voice. Etc, etc. That way we can finish out that bar on a second voice, and then when we're done, we can go back to voice number one and continue our piece. Like that. So that's how you add triplets to your score, as well as how to add a second voice to your score.